my students, today I'm going to be talking to you about the paper skeleton for our memoir project number two for Writer's Workshop. So, so far we've done list making to brainstorm some ideas for your memoir. We also committed to a memoir topic and we started mapping out some sensory details with that graphic organizer. Now that we're kind of committed to our topic, we've refreshed our memory on the events that happened, things we were seeing, things we were hearing, things we were smelling. Um, now we're ready to start organizing. So today we're going to be using a document called a paper skeleton and this paper skeleton is going to take you through the process of organizing all of the different pieces of your memory into a structure that will work for the memoir. So I'm gonna show you what the paper skeleton looks like. I'm gonna talk about each of the sections and once you're done with your paper skeleton you are going to be turning this in and then we will be using this paper skeleton as a springboard to write our first draft of our memoir and that will be in Google Docs. So take a look at this document here with me now. So here's our document for organizing our thoughts. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to map out the most important piece of writing narratively, which is what is the emotion you want the reader to feel. The whole point of creating a narrative piece of writing is to evoke an emotion from the reader. You either want to make the reader cry or laugh or feel inspired by something that you've done. So in the first box here on page one of our drafting guide, you are going to commit to your topic where it says memoir topic, and then you're also going to respond here with what is the emotion that you want to evoke from the reader. So here, try and put as much detail as you can, but this is going to be a great reminder while you're drafting and while you're writing in Google Docs later on that your goal is to make the reader feel this particular emotion. Next up, we're talking about narrative suspense. Narrative suspense is going to be a reader not being sure of what's going to happen next. It drives him or her to keep reading, to find out what's going to occur at the big moment. So to create narrative suspense for this project, you're going to work on keeping a secret from the reader. I want you to think about what is the most important part of your memory and ask yourself, how can you hint at what's going to happen without revealing too much too soon. A mistake I often see students doing whenever they're doing memoir writing or narrative writing is they're revealing the big impactful moment towards the beginning of the narrative piece. If you do that, if you reveal the big moment too soon, then there's no point for the reader to keep reading your story because they already know what happened and they're not gonna feel anything. And so they kind of are dismissive towards it. So what I want you to think about here on the front page of this drafting guide is what is the big reveal moment that's going to impact your reader and make him or her feel an emotion? And how can you keep that a secret until the moment of impact? So for example, if you're writing a memoir about the time you broke your leg, what I don't want to see is a title at the beginning of your memoir that says, the time I broke my leg. Now you revealed it. Now the reader knows the secret and it's not going to be impactful and it's not going to make him or her feel an emotion. What I do want you to do is think about what is that secret and under my big reveal moment here in the second box, you're going to type that in now. Underneath of it, I want you to think about how can you add little narrative crumbs that hint towards that moment without revealing too much too soon. And while you're drafting, later on when you're in your Google Doc, you're going to keep thinking to yourself, am I keeping my secret? Am I hinting towards what's going to happen until the perfect moment to reveal it? And that's going to make your narrative very successful. So once again, at the top, we're uh, thinking about the emotion we want to evoke from our reader. And toward the bottom of the first page, we're thinking about our secret that we're going to be keeping and how we're going to hint at that secret without revealing too much too soon. Next up, we have our paper skeleton. 
The skeleton is an organizational tool to help you create a logical progression of events in your memoir. Every student is going to have the same skeleton or bare bones. Guys, the pun. The pun is fantastic here. Everyone's going to have the same bare bones in the memoir. It's what you put on the skeleton that's going to make it unique to you. So, for the paper skeleton, every student is going to be filling in these boxes and organizing thoughts into a logical progression of events. Later on, when you're done with your paper skeleton, you're going to use this as a reference to help you be successful with typing out your first draft. So, let's take a look at the first box. The first box is attention grabbing opening. Here, you're going to think about how can you grab the reader's attention without revealing your secret. My suggestion is to start at the moment of biggest impact. Again, we're not giving away too much too soon. So, for example, if you are writing a memoir about the time you broke your leg, maybe you could start in the hospital and you're hearing beeps and you're nervous and you don't know what's going on and you're describing the sensory details of being in the hospital room and then you do a flashback of how you got there. That would grab the reader's attention where he or she is like, oh my gosh, they're in a hospital, what happened? Without revealing too much too soon. It's a great attention grabbing opening. If you don't know where to start your memoir, my suggestion is to always skip this part and come back to it later after you've mapped out the rest. Next up, we have details that set the scene. Details that set the scene is going to be your description of the setting. So here, where were you? Who was with you? My suggestion is to revisit that sensory detail graphic organizer and pack that there. Next up, description of feelings before the big moment. Here in our memoir, we're going to be doing something called juxtaposition, which is when you put two unlike things next to one another to showcase their differences. So you're going to be describing your feelings before the big event, and later on, you're going to be describing your feelings after the big moment. That way we can show a change in emotion in you and hopefully spark a change in emotion for the reader. So think about, at the beginning of your memory, the beginning of that day, how were you feeling? Were you starting very optimistic and you thought it was going to be a great day and then the thing happened and later on you can reveal that you were feeling much differently? Or maybe you're feeling anxiety and nervousness because you're doing your soccer tournament and you want to build up to you feeling proud afterwards. Think about that and you'll type your emotion in there. On the next page of our paper skeleton, we have background information needed to understand significance. Here, you're going to provide some background information that's going to be helpful to the reader to understand why this memory is important or to understand a particular event. For example, if you're doing a memoir and you're writing about a cheerleading competition at Slippery Rock University, what's some background information that we need in order to understand why it's important? How long have you been training to get there? Did you ever go there before? Was this your first time there? Things like that will help the reader understand significance. Next up, we have event leading up to the main action. This is also referred to as rising action. So here, what happened leading up to the big event? You're going to leave some little crumbs that hint at what's going to happen for your reader to enjoy. The next box is the most important box of the entire skeleton. It's the big reveal. Here, you're finally giving the details of your secret that you've been keeping. This is the hot spot. We want to slow down the pacing at the big reveal. You've spent so much time building up suspense. We can't just give the reader two sentences here. They're going to be disappointed. So, my advice is to always think like Jackie Chan, karate, slow motion. Slow it down. Be descriptive. Next up, this is the personal thoughts and feelings after the big event. So here, you're going to be describing a change in emotion. So how did you feel after the big thing happened? Pack that box. And again, these boxes, you're filling in your ideas and your thoughts. This is to organize 
everything that you are thinking about and then you're going to use this to type your actual draft later on. Okay, next up we have later events. What happened afterward? You can't just say, I broke my leg, the end. Well, what happened after? And then finally we have ultimate significance. What did you learn from this experience or what should the reader take away from this memoir? Once you've filled in the boxes with all of your ideas and you've packed them with your thoughts and you have organized a logical progression for your memoir, then later on, when we're completely done with this and you've turned it in, you're going to be using this to create your first draft in Google Docs. So at the very end of this document, I have that you're going to open up a new document in Google Docs, you're going to title it your last name, cool and personal memoir, and then you're going to, I would suggest, split screen, you're going to have your Google Doc open, you're going to have your paper skeleton open, and you're going to be using these boxes to inspire the paragraphs of your uh, memoir. So each of these boxes on your skeleton is going to be a paragraph in itself. So that means there's going to be a paragraph for attention grabbing opening, there's going to be a, a paragraph for details that set the scene, there's going to be a paragraph for how you were feeling before the big moment. You're going to have a paragraph for the background information needed to understand significance. You're going to have a paragraph for events leading up to main action. You're going to have a paragraph that's your big reveal, showing your secret finally. You're going to have a paragraph for your feelings after the big event. You're going to have a paragraph for the later events and a paragraph for ultimate significance. So your Google Doc draft one will be nine paragraphs following all of the uh, paper skeleton outline. So this document is super helpful for you getting a game plan for writing your draft. So again, you're packing your thoughts and ideas into each of these boxes to plan a logical progression of your events, of your memoir. We're focusing on an emotion that we want the reader to feel, and we're focusing on keeping a secret to create narrative suspense.